Well, I uh, was fortunate enough to know very early on, uh, maybe my early teens, that I uh, wanted to be an entrepreneur, wanted my own business, and the only other thing was to have a family full of a bunch of kids. So I, I knew pretty early, and then I, uh, when I went to college, I studied engineering and business to prepare me for that. Actually, I started the company in 1996 in the second bedroom of my home. Um, it, was, uh, it was about uh, six to eight months before we were able to get our first facility. My wife had to support me for about uh, two years. Uh, we weren't uh, profitable until then. And uh, we've uh, grown very strong ever since then. We've never had a losing quarter. Uh, the first five years of growth was about, on revenue growth, it was about 2,500%. Um, we, our profit growth has averaged, even over about 11 years, has averaged over 20%, which was more important to us than the, than the revenue growth. Lastly, in the first five years, if we would have applied for the Inc. 500, we would have been in the top 50. So we, we've been fairly successful financially. It's been, we haven't tried to grow too quickly. Uh, we've kept it moderate and sustainable growth, and, and that's allowed for us to not have any losing quarters. And in what we do, uh, we're essentially an unconventional distributor of uh, service and production parts for computing and technology applications. And it sounds like a mouthful, but um, the, the key word there really is unconventional, and, and some might say it's really disruptive is, is a better uh, qualifier for that. And, and what that means, unconventional, essentially uh, means a few things. One, it means customer-centric versus vendor-centric. Many of our competitors are authorized distributors uh, who by definition have a, a franchise to a manufacturer. So they have a line card. They're limited to what they can sell, what products they can sell to a customer to what's on their line card. That's what we consider vendor-centric. Uh, being customer-centric, we're not limited to that. Uh, we don't have any franchises, so we go to the customer and, and give them multiple price performance point solutions and let them choose. The second thing about unconventional is market liquidity. Uh, this is something that other distributors really are unable to provide. And, and what that means to us uh, is within the context of, say, the last several decades in globalization, it's changed business dramatically, both small and large businesses. Well, what we did to harness that is uh, we leveraged the liquidity of the global market by aggregating supply and demand information at a part number level uh, on a real-time basis. Now this, now we have all this information on supply and demand of part numbers. We can now design a tool set around uh, this database and this information to uh, benefit our customers. We can give them targeted cost reduction, competitive choice, market intelligence, and, and a few other benefits. So that's really the, the earmark of the market liquidity. And what that's done for us is it's, it's allowed us to, or it's helped us to take a historically reactive procurement process and turn it into a um, proactive one and give them much more control. Currently, we have uh, our headquarters in Lake Forest. Uh, we have about between 60 and 65 employees, three main offices, Lake Forest, um, Taiwan, and Boston, and we have a couple of satellite home offices in, in Two different countries in Korea and Singapore and, and now Malaysia. Uh, business is, is very good overseas. Our, we have a, a new three-year planning process, planning cycle we're going through currently, and um, it calls for uh, very large growth in both the Asia region and the European region for us. We'll be opening offices, new offices in Asia and, and also our first offices in the European region. It's really twofold. Uh, first, as it applies to, to business, uh, to the outside world, it's, it's to deliver unprecedented market liquidity in the distribution of the service and, um, and production parts. It, second, and probably more importantly, internally uh, to our employees, it's to create an environment where employees can realize their hopes and dreams and see their goals uh, happen. It's a good question. That's a, a long answer. There's a few things. One, um, an obvious one from an outside standpoint, is going to be the market liquidity that I talked about. Uh, second is, is really all everyone talks about it comes down to people. Well, it's our core values. Our, our core values are something that we 
created in, in 1999 in each year. We have five of them in each year. Uh, we go back and revisit them and see if we can update them or change them in any way or add to them. And uh, for us, they're, they're absolute, they're non-negotiable, uh, and they dictate how we make decisions and uh, are, they help us to, to, to really work within the confines of, of um, the business world to, to be successful. And I think that makes it a competitive advantage. And, and finally, the, the last thing that, that I think is a competitive advantage is uh, the way we approach business in a strategic way. And we have what we call uh, the four pillars of success. Those being, first one would be um, information management systems, second one quality management systems, uh, the third one would be business process management, and the fourth human resource management. Now information management I talked a little bit about with our delivering market liquidity and that is through a um, proprietary database we call our global supply and demand database. To the customer that's what they see. They see the benefits of that and that's, that's certainly information management. From an internal perspective that's also the foundation of our opportunity management system for our sales and purchasing staff. Um, so that, that is, uh, makes us very efficient in, in that regard. Uh, some of the other internal ways we were very big on metrics so we have a lot of key performance indicators that, that we measure. We have, I have about 20 from uh, cross-functional uh, different departments of the company that we measure and uh, we, we're also very big on, on scorecards, balanced scorecard planning. So this, the second one I referred to was the uh, quality management system and, and our foundation of that is our uh, ISO certification. It's a 9001-2000 certification and really what that allows us to do is, is three things. It allows us to uh, push the process creation down to every level of the company allows us um, to um, also have process uh, auditing and accountability and really process improvement um, at every level and, and then also the accountability. We're audited by third party every six months. We also have internal audits that happen uh, every, every quarter as well. So that helps us with the process creation and development and, and to instill a sense of continuous improvement within the company at all levels. The third pillar of our success is a business process management. And, and that, uh, the foundation of that for us is, is our scorecards. And we have a three-year planning cycle, so we have a corporate scorecard. And the balanced scorecard is a, is a very simplified way to do strategic planning. And we have a corporate scorecard which spans three years. We turn that into a one-year scorecard. Uh, that now turns or drives into quarterly departmental scorecards, and those turn into a quarterly individual scorecards. So we have uh, this simplified strategic planning from an individual level all the way up to a, a corporate level, all the way out three years. Uh, that helps us with the, with the business process tremendously. And then in part of this, the scorecards, if, if you're not familiar with scorecards, it's, it's essentially different perspectives of whatever function you're planning. Uh, and they have strategic objectives, metrics and measures around those initiatives, which are essentially tasks. And, uh, and then they have um, due dates and responsibilities. So we now, uh, the metrics I referred to, the 20 metrics might be around the company scorecard, uh, but it's a, it's a very uh, A to Z type of process, being able to do strategic planning and measure and monitor and, and, and hold uh, people accountable to it. So that's through the uh, business process management. And then the last one was human resource management. And, and that uh, has to be the most important because your people are your most valuable asset. A few years ago, we realized that, that leadership would be very important to the growth of our company. I, I think it was John Maxwell who we subscribed to his leadership philosophy uh, very much. He, he said, if you're going to grow a company, you have to grow the people. And if you're going to grow the people, you have to grow yourself. So having, being a believer in that philosophy, uh, we embarked on leadership training. We started at the senior management level. And uh, it was so well received and, and I believe so effective that we move that to all employees now go through leadership training. We go through a 10-week leadership course. And of course, we customize it for our applications, for our company. Um, and we have, uh, everybody goes through that and it's been extremely well received. The second piece of that, we have a formal program. We call it our Hopes and Dreams program. And, and that's a series of one-on-one -on -one discussions with each employee whereby we uh, determine what, what their personal goals and aspirations are. What, what do they want to accomplish at the company? 
we recognize, and we tell them this, we recognize that a lot of employees uh, may not stay longer than three to five years. It's just the nature of the, of the job market now. So we basically strike a deal with them. Hey, if, if you can come in and give us 100% um, commitment and dedication to our vision and, and to this company, in turn, we'll help you accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish. It, it may be putting your kids through college. It may be going back to college. It may be opening your own business. Uh, we've had many different examples of, of uh, success in that area. We've had uh, uh, some employees who want to join the military. We've had some who joined the sheriff's department who didn't do so well on the, the test the first few times. So uh, we've had others who started their own company. Our f very first employee, as a matter of fact, uh, my very, so I started the company by myself, and the very first guy I hired was from Indonesia, and, he, and his dream was to go back to Indonesia, start his own company, employ his family and as many people in his town as he could, and after about two and a half years, he was able to do that, and he's still successful today, providing jobs there, and, and uh, we, you know, we get a lot of satisfaction that we were there to help him accomplish that. So being in tune with what they want to achieve really helps, um, I believe, to, to create engaged employees and in turn makes us uh, more competitive out there. Sure, we have. Um, I, I think ours, with, with between 60 and 65 people, I would say uh, the majority of those are in what we call trading, sales and purchasing. So uh, we, you tend to have more attrition in those job functions, so it's a bit harder to measure, but um, we have a lot more happy stories than we do sad stories of having to let people go uh, or people leaving for the wrong reason. Uh, absolutely. Um, we've seen it. The beauty of the ISO is they hold you accountable to doing what you say you're going to do. It's well beyond say an inspection criteria for the receiving in the warehouse. Quality management is really a misnomer. It's really a, a business process management system because it goes into how we train salespeople and how we train purchasing people and what their daily priorities are. So um, we expanded the scope of it and uh, we're responsible for training and measuring and auditing that and then the uh, third party audit company is also in, in responsible for coming in and making sure we're doing that. So it, it really allowed us to, um, to see, get the results on the processes that we defined and certainly the measures that, that we had targeted. Absolutely. I, I th and this is a this is a, a good question because it is very different and I, it's going to be different in, in different situations. For my situation, I, I started off on my own, so I, I think it, it had to start with self-discipline, especially working out of my home. That, that was tough. You know, I, there's just too many distractions, but um, you really have to wear a lot of hats, as they say. So self-discipline was, was a big part of it, um, and, and as I started to grow the company, I realized that, um, wow, I'm gonna, you know, I, I can't do all these. Of course I have to hire people, that's, that's obvious. But you, st you start to realize that you've got to learn to work through people instead of just getting it done yourself. And, and that really is the essence of leadership. Leadership is working through others, you're realizing that the, your individual contribution will be uh, capped out at some point. So if you can learn to work through others and, and have positive influence over them, which is leadership, uh, you can make the transition. One of my strengths has always been the desire to grow and, and learn all I can uh, about what I'm doing. So I didn't mind learning the different functions. I didn't mind learning accounting and purchasing and sales and warehouse. And because I had an engineering degree, I, I'm an analytical person. So it really didn't bother me to, to learn. I love to learn. And I think that was, was paramount in, um, throughout not just starting, but, but even now, because my, my role changes every year. My, my time horizon keeps moving out. It used to be to the minute and, and now it's three to six to twelve months out. So it changes. You have to be adaptable. Um, it's, it, it, another thing is certainly early on you, you have to have a strong belief in yourself. You're all that's there, that you're all you have. Of course you do. Uh, 
as you evolve and grow, uh, you have to transition to a place where you believe in others. And that, that entails trust, and uh, that was a little more difficult for me. The people part of it was always harder for me, especially with the engineering background. But um, the belief in others is something over the last maybe three or four years that has been um, challenging, but, but very, very rewarding for me. Probably the analytical. Uh, the, we do a lot of economic modeling and, and a lot of what-if scenarios. So anything analytical tends to come a little bit easier for me. Crisis management tends to come a little easier for me. I, I don't know why. It's just uh, I kind of like being the underdog. I don't mind being backed into a corner. Um, you know, on the, on the flip side of that, the people management, the leadership, the um, connecting with people and developing people has always been more difficult. Not something I can't avoid, I have to do it, but, but definitely more difficult. Well, I think you have to have real clear priorities, and, and that's um, not just in your personal life, but certainly your professional life, and you have to understand your, your position and your role in the company, and, and as I said, mine changes um, as, as time goes on, but I'm always rethinking that, and what is, where's my greatest contribution, and after I define that, I, I can set my priorities. Uh, for me, you know, I have only a few priorities right now, it's, it's, it's really to create and, and communicate the vision of the company, one. Uh, two, it's to uh, define and implement strategy, which is very broad and never-ending. And then uh, three, it's to develop my, uh, the team, I have six reports right now, is to develop them, it, their leadership, their management, to, so that they can develop their teams. And then finally, it's, it's to make decisions on risk. So it's pretty limited to, to four items. If, if I understand that and I keep that clear on a daily basis, um, I can weed out anything that, that kind of finds its way, sneaks into there that really shouldn't be in there. And if it's, if it's not in one of those four, four areas, I need to delegate it. Yeah, I did. Uh, we, we actually, or I, I actually started as a little bit different business model. It, it was refurbishing PCs at the time, and I had a 60-page business plan, and it was well thought out and well documented and well researched. And I talked to um, maybe four or five angel-type investors, not necessarily the venture capitalists, not that level. We didn't need a lot of money to launch that business model. It was about three-quarters of a million dollars. Uh, but it some dynamics happened in the marketplace that changed that as well as a whole bunch of rejections that changed that uh, so it was a challenge there but we um, essentially changed the the direction and went to more of a distribution of parts model instead of refurbishing PCs when I made that decision it lowered the cost of capital that I needed and I essentially started the company with forty thousand dollars of my own money and five credit cards and used them real aggressively and uh, bootstrapped it, as they say, uh, very much, and, and worked. The next step was a bank that gave us an unsecured line of $50,000, and then it was $100,000, and then it was $400,000, and uh, we just kept, we retained all the, the cap, all the equity, all the profits were retained in the company. Uh, I really took a very low salary until maybe 2002, 2003, and it started to grow. And I would say even until last year. Last year was the first year that it was a, probably a uh, comparable salary in the marketplace. So for the reason that we could keep the money in the company, and then the bank will loan us more money because our, our debt to equity levels would, would uh, uh, substantiate that. So it, it's really just being able to sacrifice, keep the money in the company, doing what you say you're going to do for the bank. If your forecast numbers, you should hit them, and always making sure you're clear with communication to the bank on what's going on in the company and that you have a plan and strategy if, if problems do arise. And, and with those things in mind, we're able to build our capital to uh, well, well over $5 million that it is today, which is fine. We're about a $40 million company today. And uh, we find that we need uh, less and less of the bank's money as, as we go on. I think starting off, 
bootstrapping it was, was pretty difficult uh, because it was lean and the ramifications were so big. Um, we had a dry spot. We had a, a losing month in 2002 and then the economy was, was in pretty bad shape. We had one losing month that, that really surprised us and woke us up and, and we reacted real quickly on that. Uh, another situation I had, I had to remove a longtime friend who was a partner. That was uh, very delicate, but, but worked out okay. So there are situations like that, but we tend to um, have a philosophy that whenever we're challenged, we want to look at that as an opportunity to grow and to improve and to get better. And I think when you have that philosophy, what tends to happen is you come out of the back end of a hardship or of a challenge, and you're better off for it, and you tend to discount the magnitude of the difficulty when you were going through it. When I look back, I, it doesn't seem like things were that hard. I'm sure they were at the time, but it doesn't seem like it because we've come so far and I think we've had a, a good positive attitude about it and grown from it. A quote comes to mind from Zig Ziglar that's, there's no traffic jam on the extra mile. And that's obviously a play on um, go the extra mile. So. It, it's always made a lot of sense to us. Um, our competitors, for the most part, don't do it. They're not on the extra mile, so we find that we're pretty alone out there. We're generally harder on ourselves than our customers are. Um, we, we have a very long-term horizon as, as far as the, the relationship with the customer. We're not very short-sighted, so that allows us to make some difficult decisions and, and do some things that might hurt today a little bit in the short term, but are good for the relationship in the long term. When I started off, uh, I think international business was glamorous to me. It's something I always wanted to be in. Uh, boy, that was, you know, it's the, the cultural differences are, are big and, and you have to, to not only take the time to understand them, but to be sensitive to them. So it's, it's much more of a challenge than I would have thought. And it, you know, it, it's from connection to negotiating to uh, even business processes and payment terms and, and everything. So it really, different cultures have very different ways of doing things. And um, it's, that's, that's always, I've always underplayed that. And fortunately for me, um, I have some very, very good people that work for me that deal with the different cultures more than I do, so I, I think they're more equipped to do that than I am. Uh, tough question, I haven't had any previously. We just hired our first one yesterday, so I, <laughs> I'll, I'll be happy to tell you in a few months. But you know, I think in general, I'm a big believer in, in education, and, and to me an MBA demonstrates a commitment to education and growth, so um, I, it hasn't been in, intentional that we haven't hired him, uh, but I think we're getting to a size now where we're probably a little more attractive to an MBA person or someone that's, that's got a higher degree. Well, it's got to be face-to-face. -face. You know, any connection is important. And, and I think that's certainly part of leadership, but it's part of personal relationships. And uh, you've got to, the best way to have that connection is face to face. And it, and it just takes time. You have to dedicate the time to doing it and you have to get in face to face. We do a lot of selling and purchasing uh, over the phone. And it's, we um, encourage our salespeople to go out and meet with customers. And, and we, we seem to um, increase our travel budget every quarter and we always get dividends from it every time. We just can't, can't get out there enough in front of the customer, but it, it is extremely important to be face to face and to get to know them and know what's important to them and, and uh, where we can help out. Each January I sit down and uh, draft personal and family goals in different areas, physical, financial, family, work, spiritual. So. I have a whole, whole list of goals that I go through e each year. Um, you know, one of the themes for me this year on the personal side is uh, creating more memories with the family, maybe through vacations. We had a, a family had a great uh, vacation year in, in 07. We had two weeks 
in Europe, in the Mediterranean. I have three small kids under nine, so we had a blast. And then we had a week in Montana just a few weeks ago to play in the snow. So it's important that uh, now that a lot of the work is done for me and I, and I have a, a great team uh, working in the company, I can afford to take the time off, and it's important to spend it with the family. Um, fortunately, I've had the foresight, even when I started the company, I started the company, I'd, I had just gotten married, so I was fortunate that my wife could support me. I timed it perfectly um, and worked real hard then, 14-hour days, and, and she was, she's been extremely supportive and, and a blessing and it, planned it ahead of time so that as we had kids, I could spend less and less time, and, and now it's to the point where I'm, you know, 40 hours is about the average week for me, and I have a hard time using up all my vacation because I get so much of it, and it's a very, a very balanced life, but um, very, very good with the family. And but beyond the the personal goals, I think more important than goals are priorities, and, and I think a person should have very defined priorities in life and in your professional and your personal life. And within those priorities, um, you should have purposes for each one. And, and if you can draft those, if you can create those. And then put goals around those. You know, not only will you be successful, but I think you'll find more significance in life. Well, I, I would have to say it would be Jesus Christ, um, mainly because he was a perfect model on on how to live and how to lead and and how to love others. And you know, as we all have troubles with that. I certainly have my share. When I leave work, because I'm not too wound up, by the time I'm in the parking lot in my car, I'm pretty much not thinking about work and I'm, and I'm on to thinking about my family. I have a great knack of living in the moment. So when I'm on my way home, I've pretty much forgotten work. And conversely, when I'm leaving for work in the morning, I'm forgetting my family because I'm very in the moment of uh, I'm where I'm at. And so I think that creates, I don't know if my wife would agree with that, by the way, but certainly I, I believe it. Um, I think that creates a, a, a situation where I'm, I don't really have to unwind or decompress, as they say. Uh, I do. I, I really like John Maxwell's um, books on leadership. I think he's, he simplifies it. He gives you the step-by-step -step how to apply it. Uh, they're very principle-driven, so that's why we've chosen his his material to really train in, in our company. Uh, it's probably one. Um, uh, Jim Collins, good to great, has been kind of a business bible for us. I, I think the principles he teaches are exceptional for companies. And then uh, one of the Friedman's, The World is Flat, it was a recent read I just completed, which was a, a, just a great analysis and commentary on globalization. Achievement, accomplishment, I think it's probably being a dad. Um, that, that gives me great satisfaction, but, but even going beyond that, it's important, it's important for me to, as a father, to um, instill character in my kids. Teach them about life, but instill character and um, help them to understand priorities and what's important in life and values. But the character part, I had an opportunity. Last year, my, my daughter was in third grade, and she uh, started off the year struggling pretty bad in math. It was an opportunity for me to to really sit with her and teach her that you know if you just work your hardest every day, if you just keep trying every day and don't give up, you're going to figure it out and you're going to succeed in it. And it was uh, it was brutal. But <laughs> we you know we sat through some pretty long hours. But after a while, she it really clicked in her. She figured it out and. Um, she really learned the character trait of persistence and she learned that work ethic is important and that she can overcome anything if she just keeps um, diligently applying herself every day. And that's a character trait that she'll have forever. It's something that was recognized by her teacher in her and something that, um, you know, that I always want to instill in my kids. So that, that was pretty, very satisfying, pretty neat that, that I could guide her and help her um, identify that trait in herself and, and that was very satisfying. Another thing that's been very satisfying is as far as the company we're at a point where we're, we're really getting traction on accomplishing our 
our vision of creating an environment where employees can see their hopes and dreams come true. And, and, and to see uh, employees come in and you know, maybe they want to buy their first house and, and they accomplish that because they earned enough money or uh, maybe they want to start their own business or join the military or join the sheriff's department. And, and to be able to see some of those things come true is very satisfying because that's something I've envisioned from the very start, even when I had no employees. It was just, I don't know why, it just was in, it was in there and uh, God put that in me and I'm, and, and I'm satisfied, I'm grateful now that we're able to accomplish that through the company. I'm not sure I would do anything differently because the decisions you make as you go along, everything you do um, really creates your, your present, really makes you what you are now. And, and I, I'm so uh, satisfied and happy with my life now, with, with my family, with my kids and my wife and, and, and where the company's at and the people who I work with. I love what I do. Uh, I feel tremendously blessed so I kind of feel like if I went back and changed something I wouldn't be where I am and I'm in, I'm in a very very good place and and been very blessed so I, I really can't say that I would change anything for that reason they have to understand that business is principle driven just like life is so you got to learn the principles as quickly as you can. You got to learn how to apply them. You understand that there is authoritative truth and principles out there, and there's different ways to do things. But um, values are very important. Having having the core values, and it, you know, once you understand that, uh, I, I think it becomes easier. And they've you really need to spend a lot of time on leadership, because again, you're. You're going to understand. You have to understand. Individuals are going to their contribution is going to cap out at some point, and the only way you're going to continue to grow and succeed in your career is by learning to work through others, which is leadership. So if you do that, you'll be okay. Um, the thing that a lot of people forget is to be a good leader, you have to learn to be a follower first. So you know we see it a lot where people want to get into management or leadership, and they really aren't such a good follower. So you have, to, you have to learn to be a good follower and then you can learn to be a good leader and then you'll have all kinds of success.